we call Earth our home in the universe. But we are not alone here. We share our home with millions of species of plants and animals, ranging from gigantic blue whales to microscopic bacteria. Plants, trees, animals and microorganisms maintain the quality of our planet's air, water and soil which is essential for the survival of humans. Forests also play an important part as the primary producers on which all the species of animals depend directly or indirectly. The variety of living things found in a region, country or the entire earth is called its biological diversity or biodiversity. Here is a picture showing the biodiversity of a coral reef. We do not live in isolation from plants and animals around us. Various species that form the biodiversity of a region are interdependent on each other. All the species of plants and trees found in a region are collectively called the flora of the region. The species of animals found in a region are collectively called the fauna of the region. India has a rich biodiversity and is home to around 1.6 million or nearly 8% of all the species of flora and fauna found in the world. India is home to around 47,000 species of flora. These range from tiny ferns to lofty trees. Around 15,000 species of flowering plants are indigenous to India. India is also home to over 81,000 species of fauna. These include birds, insects and land and water animals. Overexploitation and insensitivity towards our environment has led to large scale degradation of biodiversity in India. According to official records, 79 species of mammals are threatened in India. The state of birds, reptiles, and amphibians is no better. Several species of fauna, for example, the cheetah, the pink-headed duck, the mountain quail, and the forest spotted owlet are facing total extinction. The state of the flora is as poor as the fauna with nearly 1,500 species of plants like Madhuka in Cygnus and Hubardia heptaneuron on the verge of extinction. The total forest cover in India is around 78.29 million hectares or about 23.81% of the country's total geographical area. Officially, the area under dense forest cover has increased since 1997. But this is more due to increase in plantations than natural forests. In order to preserve world biodiversity, the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources or IUCN 
has devised a method of placing different species of flora and fauna into six categories. As per IUCN guidelines, species of flora and fauna can be classified as normal, extinct, endangered, vulnerable, rare, or endemic. Plants and animals whose population is sufficient for the survival of their species are called normal species. These include cattle, rodents and trees like pine and sal. A species that cannot be found after prolonged search in its area of habitation is called an extinct species. Note that a species may be extinct from an area, a country, or the entire earth. Some such species are the Asiatic cheetah and the pink-headed duck. A species that is facing the danger of extinction, if the factors responsible for its decline are not checked, is called an endangered species. For example, the black buck, Indian rhino, crocodile, Indian wild ass, lion-tailed macaque, and the sangai deer, a species that is likely to become endangered due to decreasing population, unless conserved, is called vulnerable species. Examples are the blue sheep, the Asiatic elephant, and the Gangetic dolphin. A species with a small population that is likely to become vulnerable or endangered without conservation efforts is called a rare species. Some rare species include the Asiatic wild buffalo, brown Himalayan bear, desert fox, and hornbill. A species found only in a particular region due to isolation by natural or geographic barriers is called an endemic species. For example, the Andaman teal and wild pig, the Nicobar pigeon, and a bovine called Mithun, found in Arunachal Pradesh. Meet the Asiatic Ichita. This exotic cat with distinguishing teardrop markings on its face was once found throughout Asia. It became extinct in India in 1952 and is nearly extinct in other parts of the Asian continent due to loss of habitat and prey. Here is the Himalayan yew, a medicinal plant found in Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh. The bark, needles and roots of this plant yield a substance called taxol, which is used to treat several types of cancer. Thousands of Himalayan yew trees have dried up in the last decade due to overexploitation. Today, the species is endangered. These accounts bring us to the question, what are the factors responsible for the depletion of the flora and fauna in India? The main reason for the depletion of fauna is excessive hunting and poaching for fun and commercially valuable animal body parts.
forests and wetlands are natural habitats of animals. The destruction of these habitats has also resulted in the depletion of our wildlife. Thus, we can link the depletion of our fauna with the depletion of flora. Forests are the main source of food, firewood, medicines, dyes, and fodder. Overexploitation of these resources has resulted in the depletion of flora. However, most communities that use these resources are sensitive towards forest resources and use them wisely. For instance, most of the firewood is collected through lopping and not by falling entire trees. Deforestation in the name of development is one of the main causes of the depletion of flora. This began early in colonial India when vast stretches of natural forests were destroyed for the expansion of railways. Agriculture Commercial farming and mining The colonial practice continued even after independence. From 1951 to 1980, over 26,200 square kilometers of forests were destroyed and converted into cultivated land. Large infrastructure projects have also resulted in massive deforestation. Over 5,000 square kilometers of forests have been cleared since 1951 for multi-purpose river projects. The Narmada Sagar project in Madhya Pradesh alone will submerge 40,000 hectares of natural forests. Mining is another activity that contributes to deforestation. The Baksa Tiger Reserve in West Bengal faces serious threat from ongoing dolomite mining that has caused habitat destruction and blocked the migration routes of several animals like the Indian elephant. Poor cultivation methods like slash and burn agriculture or jumming practiced by tribal people in northeastern and central India have also led to deforestation. Overgrazing by cattle herds also leads to large-scale destruction of pastures and natural forests. Enrichment plantation is the practice of replacing different species of trees in an area by a single commercially valuable species. For example, teak plantations have damaged natural forests in South India, while chair pine plantations in the Himalayas have greatly reduced natural oak and rhododendron forests. Besides the causes we have discussed so far, factors like environmental pollution, 
and forest fires lead to a depletion of both our flora and fauna. The factors that lead to the depletion of our flora and fauna are actually responsible for a decrease in India's biodiversity. The environmental factors that lead to a decline in biodiversity are caused by inequitable consumption of resources and inequitable responsibility borne for the well-being of the environment. For example, on an average, an American consumes 40 times more resources than a Somalian. Similarly, the richest 5% Indians consume more resources than the poorest 25% of our population. However, the responsibility for the protection and conservation of the environment is not shared by people in proportion with the resources that they consume. People who consume less and have less access to resources are often blamed for the degradation of the environment. You must have come across appeals to save different types of animals and our forests in the newspaper and on television. Why should we bother about such issues of forest and wildlife conservation? The answer is for our own well-being. Conservation of plants and animals ensures the quality of air, water and soil on which we depend for our survival. Conservation of plant species is essential to maintain their genetic diversity. This is extremely beneficial for our agriculture produce. Conservation of animal species is equally important for their breeding and maintenance of food chains. Conservation efforts in India started gaining momentum in the 1960s, resulting in the implementation of Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. The salient features of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 included making provisions for habitat protection, publishing a list of protected species, imposing legal restrictions on hunting, poaching and trade in wildlife, and setting up of national parks and sanctuaries in different parts of India by giving legal protection to the habitat. The Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 also proposed conservation projects for some specific endangered animals. These include the Royal Bengal Tiger, One-Horned Rhinoceros, Kashmir Stag, locally called Hangul, Saltwater and Freshwater Crocodiles, and their cousin the Gharial, and the Asiatic Lion. Recently, Several other animals have been included in the list of protected animals with a legal ban on their hunting and trade. These include the Indian elephant, the black buck, or chinkara with its beautiful spiral horns, the great Indian bustard, and the snow leopard. Today, Conservation efforts in India are expanding their scope to include even insects and plants in the list of protected species along with large animals. 
hundreds of species of butterflies, moths, beetles, and one species of dragonfly were included in the list of protected species through the Wildlife Act of 1980 and 1986. Six species of plants also found their way into this list in 1991. One conservation project that requires an important mention in India's wildlife conservation effort is dedicated to our national animal, the Royal Bengal Tiger. This program is called Project Tiger. India and Nepal are home to about two-thirds of the tiger population in the world. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were an estimated 55,000 Royal Bengal Tigers in the wild. By 1973, this population had dwindled alarmingly to just 1,827. The main reason for such drastic decline in the tiger population is poaching for lucrative trade in tiger skin, claws and bones and other body parts used in traditional medicines. Other reasons for the loss of tiger population include loss of natural habitat due to increasing human population and decline in the population of their natural prey. Project Tiger was launched in 1973 with the aim to protect and expand the tiger population through conservation methods. The results of Project Tiger have been mixed. Initially, the tiger population increased from 1,827 in 1973 to 4,002 in 1985 and 4,334 in 1989. However, by 1993, the tiger population had dropped to 3,600. At present, there are 39 tiger reserves in India. Some of the main tiger reserves where you may want to go to get a glimpse of this mighty cat are the Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarkhand, the Sundarbans National Park in West Bengal, the Bandhavgarh National Park in Madhya Pradesh, the Sariska Wildlife Sanctuary in Rajasthan. The Manas Tiger Reserve in Assam. And the Periyar Tiger Reserve in Kerala. We already know how flora and fauna are important to us. But who looks after our forests and wildlife? Most of the forest and wildlife resources are owned by the government of India and managed through several departments like the Forest Department. In order to streamline conservation efforts, our forests are divided into three types. Reserved forests, protected forests and Unclassed forests. Over 50% of the forests in India have been declared reserved forests. These reserved forests are of primary importance from the conservation point of view. The states of Jammu and Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Uttarkhand, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Maharashtra have a large percentage of their forests classified as reserved forests. 
Around one third of the forests in India are classified as protected forests. These forests are guarded against further loss of forest and wildlife resources. Most parts of the forests in Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Orissa, and Rajasthan are classified as protected forests. Reserved and protected forests are together called permanent forest estates or simply permanent forests. They are closely guarded and maintained to conserve and collect timber and other forest produce. Madhya Pradesh has the largest share of permanent forests in India. With almost 75% of its forests classified as permanent forests. All the forests and wastelands other than the reserved and protected forests are considered unclassed forests. An unclassed forest may belong to the government a community or even a private individual. Most of the forests in the northeastern states of India and Gujarat are unclassed forests that are managed by local communities. It is wrong to imagine that unclassed forests lack conservation efforts because they are managed by local communities. In fact, community participation plays a key role in the conservation of our forest and wildlife resources. Conservation of nature has always been a part of Indian culture. All forms of nature are considered sacred in India. From the sun, rivers and mountain peaks to trees and animals. The Munda and Santhal tribes of the Chota Nagpur region worship the Mahua and Kadamba trees. Tribes in Orissa and Bihar worship the tamarind and mango trees. People and banyan trees are considered sacred in most parts of India. Thus, religious faith has led to the conservation of certain specific types of trees. Conservation of flora is not limited to specific trees in India. In several parts of India, parts of forests or complete forests are protected by communities since they are considered to be abodes of gods and goddesses. Such protected forest areas are called sacred groves. Besides trees, some animals, like monkeys, are also considered sacred and fed at places of worship. The Bishnoi community in Rajasthan is known for its love and devotion to animals, such as the black buck. Nilgai and Peacock. All such beliefs ultimately lead to wildlife conservation. Besides religious beliefs, another reason for community participation in conservation efforts is the concern for their own survival. Forests are home to many of India's tribal communities that depend on forests for their survival and livelihood. Many such communities are actively helping government officials in their conservation efforts.